around the 2015-16 when uh, we started uh, like beat the heat as the initial concept and that took some time for us to a couple of product launches into India and explain to them what we are trying to achieve and uh, around the 17 is when earlier version of UBCC got evolved as cold chain unbroken so what uh, made this so unique about when compare rest of them is that uh, X-ray machines was one pain area that we identified many years ago at the airports for active and passive containers. And at that point of time, uh, we were doing our event in Hyderabad and uh, we took that up an issue and then uh, GMR Hyderabad was very kind enough in terms of really upgrading the X-ray machines. And that followed suit in all other airports. So while we may not get a direct credit, but uh, we've been instrumental in taking up industry issues. Anyone does anything should have a purpose end of the day and the purpose should be driven by sheer passion. And when you have purpose and passion and you have a commitment and dedication, then the output that comes out is ultimately uh, what you see today uh, sort of thing. And I think the last thing is that this is just the start. It's only growing bigger and people are seeing greater value year on year. Every uh, edition of CCUB has now remarkably uh, addressed issues. Uh, we're getting more and more subjects, creating more awareness. So I think we're going in the right direction and uh, I'm really happy that the response to host the event is only getting greater and greater. Child or whether it is a plant, everything has to mature over a period of time. First seed when it fell in my brain, it was constantly thinking every day is that uh, what should be done and then finally when the first thing came out, like I said, like my own child, uh, the hand holding had to be done. Now we are in a situation to recognize industry leaders give lifetime achievement awards. Uh, now we will get to a stage where CCUB will become the front phase and we will institutionalize CCUB with clear mandate and we would want to be the face to the government clearly in terms of addressing cold chain issues. After this edition, we can clearly see that what we want to do, how we want to do, and by when we want to reach. So the maturity is now far higher than what it was uh, as a child. Good morning to everyone present here today. My name is Rachaida and on the behalf of the entire team of CCUB, I, I'm, I'm very excited to welcome you all to Cold Chain Unbroken 2023, presented by Wispreet. And uh, Team Logistics Insider is excited to be the official media partner for the event. And here I'd like to take a brief moment to thank all our partners for helping making this event possible. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to begin with our inaugural ceremony. And for that, I would request uh, the dignitaries to join me on the stage as I announce your names. Uh, so with a big round of applause, let's welcome our chief guest, Dr. S. Selva Kumar, IAS Princi Principal Secretary, Department of Commerce and Industries, Government of Karnataka. Dr. Selva Kumar is an IAS officer of the 1997 batch Karnataka Kader. He has studied engineering, economics and law and completed his doctorate from Mysore University. He has also studied at the Duke University USA and during his career he has held various positions in the state and center. Welcome to the show sir, we are so honored to have you here. Our next guest is our guest of honor, Ms. Kajal Singh, Principal Commissioner, ACC and Airports. Ms. Singh is a 1992 Batch Officer of the IRS, Customs and Indirect Taxes. Uh, she's currently working as the Principal uh, Commissioner of Customs, Airport and Air Cargo Bengaluru. She has worked in various capacities uh, in the Customs and Central Excise as, at field level. Welcome to the show, ma'am. We are really excited to have you. 
Our next uh, speaker is our keynote speaker, Mr. Satyaki Raghunath, Chief Strategy and Development Officer, Bile. Please give him a big round of applause. Mr. Raghunath is an aviation futurist, strategist, digital innovation expert and speaker with board and C-suite experience in over two decades with public and private operators of transport infrastructure globally. He currently leads the strategy and development vertical at Bile and serves at the board of multiple subsidiaries of Bile. We have next Mr. Ram Kumar Govind Rajan, founder and CEO of WIS. Please give him a big round of applause. Uh, Mr. Govind Rajan is the founder and CEO. He started WIS along with Mr. Ram Kumar Ramchandran, a veteran with 30 plus years of experience in logistics industry back in 2020. Wow, it is so great. Just in a span of a few years, WIS has grown to be such an organization that they are organizing an event like CCUB. Wow, it's just amazing. Kudos to you, sir, and to your team. Now, uh, Mr. Govind Rajan is passionate about technology and likes to work um, on use cases to solve problems using technology. Welcome to the show, sir. And finally, uh, the man behind it all, Mr. Satish Lakaraju, Global Head, Air Freight and Pharma Wiz. He deserves a big, big round of applause with an uh, experience of almost three decades, Mr. Lakaraju has demonstrated a history of working in the logistics and supply chain industry. He's a passionate about life sciences and patient safety and speaks in various domestic and international forums. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your august presence on the stage. Firstly, uh, you know, as we gather to think about the cold storage and the cold chain uh, industries here in India, I think over the course of the last two and a half, three years, especially through the COVID period, it's become apparent to us as to how important the cold chain industry is and how important the logistics and supply chain industries are. And in that context, I think, uh, you know, I want to touch on four themes. The first theme was sort of how the perishable and the pharmaceutical industry has really driven uh, the cold chain industry. And the fact is that we've uh, really started paying much more attention to it with the growth of these two industries here. Uh, and, and not just here in India, but across the globe. The, the second theme was on looking at the e-commerce market, which is again something that really came into prominence probably over the last 15 years, but was certainly exacerbated over the course of the COVID pandemic. And the fact that all of us are so dependent on this particular industry for our daily lives. Today, every one of us orders things without thinking about it. And it would never have been possible uh, a few years ago. And the e-commerce industry is, again, something that's driving the cold chain uh, industry very dramatically and, and will continue to do so over the course of the next few years. Thirdly, I think the, the, the third theme is about policy initiatives that the government is taking both from an Indian perspective and sort of working with trade bodies and other countries to try and ensure that the cold chain industry is unbroken and we have the right sort of initiatives from a regulatory and policy perspective in order to make the industry thrive and grow. And I think the fourth and final theme which is all pervasive and affecting industry all over the place is the idea of sustainability and environment. I think it's becoming increasingly important to all of us that climate change and sustainability are going to be the biggest topics of the next future generation. And it's something that all of us have to take exceptionally seriously. And it's being exacerbated and magnified by what we're seeing every year with respect to, uh, you know, what, what we're seeing uh, with disasters, with sort of unnatural events going on every year. And how all of us will probably have to think about this in everything that we do here uh, within the not just the cold chain industry, but literally every industry that any of us is part of. I would like to introduce you to our second session, the cold chain infrastructure at airports and on ground. Let me go to specifics of uh, the first business session that happened on the 14th of September which was more related to infrastructure at airports and on the ground. And I'm really proud to say that uh, the best of people in the industry uh, globally were present on it because that track uh, had a moderator who came in with around 40 to 47 years of experience. So the whole track had close to 200 to 250 years of 
combined uh, knowledge that was sitting on the platform. But I think what came out very clearly uh, right from uh, Mohammad Isa, who represented WFS, to someone like Prasad Gengusetti, who represented GMR, and then Manoj Singh, who represented Adani's, which represents almost eight airports in the country. And then you had uh, Burak, who represented Turkish, which has one of the world's largest network. And then you had Abdullah, who represented Emirates. Uh, you couldn't have asked for more in terms of what could come out of it. One thing came out very clearly is that uh, Indian airports have put in a lot of infrastructure at the major gateways in the country. So which basically came whether it's Bombay, whether it is Hyderabad, whether it's Bangalore, uh, through WFS or whether it is uh, any other part of the metro stations, the infrastructure in the private airports has been a boon to it. And it also came out very, very clearly that uh, pharma zones are there, differentiating between a perishable and a pharma uh, is there. Uh, the sense of understanding uh, how to maintain temperature and that came out. Also what came out uh, very, very clearly is that uh, while we have come uh, to a very large extent in terms of what we have put on the ground, but there are still areas which have to be addressed clearly in terms of transshipment capabilities uh, for temperature controlled cargo. Uh, there are still uh, some bit of bottlenecks in certain areas which could be addressed within the country. Uh, and then we had John Ackerman who also came in from DFW which clearly said that even some of the US airports have now been sensitivized in terms of the infrastructure and the rest of them. A message that came out is that on the ground, the airports have put the infrastructure, there's a lot of money spent, the airlines have invested in their aircraft, they have built networks. Uh, and now it's time, how really can, if things are on the ground, ACAGO can actually grow uh, at a constant pace. I think that's the message uh, we should all be getting out of the first track. So now let me go to the second track and why the second track was really curated. If things have been put on the ground and if there is airports and there is infrastructure, then where is the bottleneck? And uh, the cue that we should take from the first track into the second track was that it's not the flying time which really matters, but the time it takes on the ground to get the cargo into the aircraft has to be simplified. And that is where I think uh, Customs Commissioner also was invited and asked to give her updates in terms of uh, what is happening and what needs to be done. Uh, the track was moderated by Radha Krishan Panikar who is a veteran in terms of being in the industry and qualified DG or trainer. And then we had Mr. Krishna Kumar as the global chief operating officer of VIS being present uh, as well and giving their inputs in terms of uh, what is the expectation in terms of uh, really uh, doing a few steps which could ease the whole situation. And I brought out a point very particularly in the Q&A session saying that uh, there is an issue of giving bond uh, on several locations for every shipment. And fortunately, the Commissioner Customs, who was present, uh, immediately responded and gave a ruling saying that you should put an application and I will make sure that at least at Bangalore Airport, the continuity bond would be implemented. So I think this again goes to manifest that CCUB uh, has taken up issues uh, at the right forum and imagine uh, Commissioner giving an answer in front of everyone is a remarkable thing to happen because this was not something which I fighting for today. This is something which I've been fighting for the last couple of years. But I'm thinking at least someone has agreed in the Indian ecosystem to give it. And I hope that if that happens at Bangalore Airport, it will follow suit in uh, the rest of the airports. I think that is track uh, too uh, clearly, which uh, you know, uh, bought off it. Now let's go to track three and what made track three really made out of it and what's so special track out of it. I think India is talking about Bharat now. Uh, we looked at words like Hindustan in the past, we looked at things like India. 
but uh, india has lot of superheroes and lot of them goes unnoticed because uh, the population that india has the chances of people being missed out is very very thin and so what we tried to do in it is the track was moderated by uh, founder and ceo of viz ramkumar govind rajat who thought it makes it very relevant that the learnings of other supply chains are really understood and is there anything good in the other supply chains that can be implemented clearly in the life science cold chain and perishable vertical and what we be decide about is that high tech is one vertical where speed is essence and cost is of paramount importance so if you today looking at your mobile phone or your any of the tech gadgets you can't bring them by ocean freight because uh, by time you bring the model is going to be outdated so we had alok kumar singh who had come from vibidian uh, which is one of the fastest growing companies and he gave his insights from uh, his mind clearly as to what uh, they have been doing what is their expectation how did how are they managing their supply chains how are they managing dangerous goods by air uh, what challenges they can face Uh, great insights lot of learning uh, for us we also realized that they also have temperature controlled cargo then the b- other person whom we had uh, was seema kapoor from jubilant in grivia who has large amount of ocean freight cargo dangerous goods iso tanks uh, which are very complicated in terms of uh, the msds and imdg rules and the rest of them and small quantity of a cargo in it and uh, their own challenges because where the product can't afford a high cost and but that compliance is to be there so that was another learning that people got to see and then we went to a market which uh, every one of us understands but don't understand the challenge which was uh, a food fmcg uh, product uh, del monte and gaurav makija gave his insights and i think that was also very brilliant in terms of what came out and then we had varun chopra from gear uh, who spoke about uh, clearly the material handling equipment and their amount of challenges and the rest of them so in and all brilliant session great learnings uh, lot to uh, understand uh, and and then that ended the day uh, one clearly on a super high note uh, because we Uh, acknowledged uh, the supply chain heroes of bharat uh, in the process uh, i think uh, that's where the, the, and let's go to uh, day 2's first session which was uh, active and passive uh, solution and how do we optimize packaging solution because it's always been a debate as to should i use an active solution should i use a passive solution which is better than which and that confusion has always been there and there's no straight answer of what is right and what is not right and which uh, suit really fits uh, so there's not a standard answer so i think in this session again a very great session you had ravi kumar tumapalli managing director of vacutech uh, mari grovlander who was the advisor to the board of advisors for skycell who was present uh, then you had rashmi karnad who was a subject matter expert from the airlines who was also part of pharma.ero who was present to give an airline perspective uh, then you had uh, a representative chervi from csaf who came all the way for the first time to ccub uh, to talk more about uh, the trends in the uh, cold chain industry from a pharma angle uh, uh, then you had uh, mr govind rajan who was also present uh in, in the session uh, clearly to give uh, his insight but then you had a technology angle in that which had stefan who was present in the session who came uh, from smart ci on root validation and the digital uh, twill uh, angle sort of it so i think there was uh, many things that were touched but one takeaway that came for uh, me is that packaging is evolving constantly and is only getting better and better as also that one thing that came out was that the chargeable weight uh, aspect of uh, containers becoming more lighter becoming more robust uh, and uh, robotic process automation being put to manufacture the boxes 
uh, came out very very clearly uh, so i think great session great learning and then we went into the perishable track which was the second track that uh, was probably for me uh, very close to the heart because it touches the lives of the farmers uh, and now that uh, india is clearly looking at uh, helping farmers and uh, doing lot more in terms of getting better uh, money into the farmers pocket i think this track had a great moderator uh, k kubomi gazdar who always has been passionate worked on the northeast uh, farming sector who's worked along with the government so i thought there was no one better in app than him to really moderate the session and he had a strong uh, set of speakers uh, starting with uh, the shippers like uh, next on uh, led by dr pradyuman agrahari then you had samit sajdeva from baramati uh, agro and to add you had uh, the nicest and uh, greatest of man uh, which is ramesh mamidala who represents air india and today in all sense air india is the one which we are talking about clearly uh, as a national carrier what uh, they can be doing it and then you had manish agnihotri from wfs who gave the perspective uh, of uh, clearly what the airports have put in place and uh, what can be expected out of uh, the airports so i think this track really brought out that uh, india has lot to learn from other countries because one of the things that came out was that what countries like uh, peru uh, lima having single airport uh, testing the product and telling the world that look this product is tested and it can be launched in any part of the country and whatever they certify was accepted because today if a product is tested in india the likelihood of it being accepted in europe or in us is uh, always questionable saying that you know uh, that credibility india has not been able to build second also the learning that came out of this session is that uh, i was a strong believer even in the past that uh, Uh, contract farming was a great success story i thought uh, based on the uh, case laws that i studied during my mba days but what came out is that uh, farmers know better to handle their farms and contract farming is not really a great success story sort of thing. i think that track really if someone follows and implements a couple of things we should see a great amount of change clearly and the last thing that touched my heart was there is no substitute to quality in terms of the products that we produced and i think uh, keku bought out some very pertinent points that india is a market leader in a couple of products also what came out was thailand was once a great market leader for baby corn export but india has taken the slot to become the market leader for baby corn export also came out very very clearly and if it can be done for baby corn then why can't it be done for the other product and what really was you know good to note in this country the role of epeda that was played and what uh, ms abraham bought about is that the government's initiative to work on what the importing country needs was the other aspect which came out very very well in the track and i would guess uh, i would love to bring this track back again in 2000 24 editions because uh, it it's making sense i think so these two tracks then set us to uh, really move to uh, the later half of the day and that was the third track which was why is ocean freight now a natural choice for importers and exporters over air freight prominence of air freight reducing uh, in the supply chain uh, uh, and what are the learnings that came out of it was very clearly manifested one cost of transportation in ocean freight naturally is far lower than what it is in air freight two lower transit times when compared to long transit times in the past because the number of vessels that are available uh, is another aspect that came about also containers availability uh, more icds and ports available in the country and the last bit of is tracking and visibility also came out very very clearly that track had jairam radhakrishnan who moderated the track Uh, who's the ceo for uh, visfreight india uh, and uh, he really moderated well in terms of 
uh, taking inputs from Devang uh, Vyas from Glenmark and Amritendu Mukherjee from Dr. Reddy's and then having Jeva Kumar from CMA CGM giving his inputs. I think in and all, uh, very clear, AFRAID needs to do much better to attract uh, the attention of the customers. I think in the last track for the day, for me was just too good. Uh, we a track which was moderated by Mr. Pawan Mulkutla from WRA, who uh, I met many years ago in one of the tracks. And I'm happy to inform that some of my inputs have also featured uh, in IAM Ahmedabad's uh, case log uh, that I had given in one of his sessions that he had invited me to speak. Uh, and WRA has been doing a good uh, amount of work in terms of working with Niti, IOG and uh, other agencies on the EV side, hydrogen uh, and sustainability. So Pawan had a very nice panel. We had Guhan uh, who heads Vistrax uh, based out of Chennai. Then you had uh, the presence of Mr. Narang, uh, who uh, really represented uh, one of the fastest growing industry uh, in terms of mobility. Then you had Manoj Sharma, who came from HCMI, from Manesar. Uh, and then you had Samit Jain from Plus Advanced Technologies. But Samit can maybe be from the packaging industry, but his inputs in terms of what he can give both on the packaging side and on the sustainability side are uh, phenomenal. And uh, who will build the cat and who will start first? I think Uday Narang was very, very clear that uh, I've come back to this country and uh, he was very vocal. If you don't do it today or if you uh, keep waiting for government to do it, it's not going to happen. Let's move and make it happen. Uh, who is the winner or who is the loser really does not matter. But someone has to start. And I think you need people like him who are vocal, who are pushy, with the balanced approach of people like Samit Jain on one side, Manoj Sharma ji on one side, and young generation like, uh, you know, Guhan who are trying to build technology-based uh, tracking systems. And uh, the message was very, very clear. I think uh, overall all the tracks have done extremely well uh, and uh, the quality of speakers uh, was just too good. Uh, I think in and all, CCUB 2023 had some uh, wonderful tracks and to have a packed house on day two was uh, generally not a case uh, after a long awards night that happens. So I think these are things which one has to really appreciate. If you can really mentor, monitor and advise young children and the purpose behind what we are trying to do, they will really give their heart and soul because that's an age where they're looking for guidance. And I think it's a great initiative and learning for even other people in the industry is that catch the talent young, give them the right input, put them in the right direction and build organizations is the only message that I can give to anyone if at all they want a message uh, out of CCU. CCUB will also migrate slowly to evolve and adopt other verticals which require similar thought process of thinking of creating end-to-end -end visibility, for example, whether it is cold chain or whether it is uh, food and FMCG or whether it is high tech, end-to-end -end visibility will be a big subject. Second, managing documents uh, using technology and cloud uh, will be another aspect that we will bought and this year we had Alexa who uh, were the title sponsor and uh, they clearly uh, manifested on how we can manage end-to-end -end documentation and the rest of them. So I think there are a lot of subjects for the next coming uh, uh, thing. We also should look forward as to what chat GPT should be able to assist in terms of uh, uh, you know technology being used because uh, whether it is cold chain or whether it is anything, uh, packaging is always an area where uh, what is right and what is wrong uh, is always been a challenge. So I think there are many things that I can clearly tell you that for the next edition people will 
be thrilled to see the subjects. It will take some time to build, but we are absolutely confident that we will put an outstanding uh, CCUB 2024. The venue remains to be really a surprise. We look forward to hosting in any venue, but focus on the content. To CCUB 2023 Award Night. Mike, cut it. Mike. Yes.